God Almighty, the reason that we're seated here today. Not everyone has read your word, but the people in front of me today have read your word. And it is through them that others will see your glory. Amen. Let the spirit of oppression that is over anyone in this place today be gone in the name of Jesus. If there is sickness in the day, in this place today, be gone in the name of Jesus. As I look around this place today, there are certain people here that need healing. In Jesus' name, let that be gone. And Lord, as we look around, every one of us, every one of us here is a broken soul. And it is through you that we seek glory. It is a new year. 2018 is a year to smile. The reason that we smile is because of your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 18, 20 says, When two or more are gathered together, then we can praise your name and anything can happen in your name. Miracles can happen in your name. Healing can happen in your name. And oppression can be gone in your name. Those that have lost people this year or last year, bring joy to you this year, bring peace to you this year. It is important for us as we pray today to make sure that we are looking at you. 2 Corinthians 3 verses 4 and 5. Such confidence we have through Christ before God. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. In your precious name, amen. amen. Happy New Year to you all. What was that? Happy New Year to you all. It's 2018. If you're new to the church, my name is Ian. A warm welcome to you. Uh, we take the time every Sunday to connect. In my, my front pocket, in your front seat pocket, you have a connection card. Looks like this. I think it's white. So if you could just pull out that and with a pen, we just love to connect with you today. So if you're a regular, just pop your name and email address. If you are new, just pop your mobile number there, we'll give you a call just to say g'day. As I was just talking when we're praying, um, prayer requests are so important. If you have a need or a request, write it down, please. It's prayed upon each and every week by the pastoral care team. Prayer is important, prayer works. Those of you that have lost their way and have lost a little bit of faith because it's not working, pray harder. Praise notes, if anything has happened in your life that you can thank God for, let us know. We can share it with the rest of you. If you do want to join a connect group in 2018, uh, just mark that down. And also next, uh, next month, can you believe it's February next month, we start in our PM services. Um, so if you do, do you do want to join in the new PM service team, so maybe the welcome team, maybe the ushering team, um, please let us know. So just, uh, I'll give you a minute or so just to fill that in, and um, yeah, that'll be great, thank you. Cards. Um, Pastor Christian is just going to encourage us with our offering today. And then when the buckets come around for the offering, you can drop your connection card in. Thank you. Wonderful. In the same place that you found your connection card, you will find several blue and red envelopes. Just take one of each. The blue envelope is for our regular tithes and offerings. This is what we at Hope Church do that call Hope Home. It's just part of who we are. It's what we do on a regular basis. And the red envelope is for once a month for our building fund. We're very grateful for the building God has given us. But, you know, we want to see the church grow, the church at large, and this local church, and we are saving up for our next facility. And so it's income tax deductible, and you can give towards that. Three ways to give. You can do it old school, cash in the envelope. The other day I got cash, and I thought, oh my goodness, these new dollar notes look pretty nice. I haven't used cash in ages. Uh, those who like this credit card, like me, put your credit card details on it. 
or you can go online to our website on the screen and give there. Regardless of method, the principle is ageless and remains the same. And so as you prepare to give, one verse to encourage you from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. Paul writes with the Corinthian church, he says, For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. He is a man highly educated. I mean, he had a lot. And he says, the most important thing is Jesus and him crucified. If there's one thing that I am driven by to see among you is that you may know Jesus. Not just know about him, but know him. He is so driven to the point that he actually later on, history tells us, gives up his life for the gospel. He is gospel driven. He is Christ driven. No one has to twist his arm. No one has to give him a motivational speech. He is sold out because he has an encounter with the risen Christ. And he has him in the same sense. And as a result, he can't help it. He says, you know what? Whatever will advance the cause of Christ, I will give my all. And I thought, you know what? That's what it means to be a Christian. We had an encounter with Jesus and we, and we can't be the same. We're not the same anymore. And as a result, our hearts, because Jesus is the best thing that can ever happen to you for all eternity, we want others to have that same experience. And so we will do whatever it takes that others may have that experience. It is up to the Holy Spirit to draw people and save them. But you know what? He has given us a divine commission to throw everything behind it, our time, our effort, our energy, our finances, that Christ may be known among our loved ones and those who don't know him yet. That's why we give. We're not twisted, we're not forced, we're compelled by the love of Christ. So let's give with that in mind. Why don't you hold your offering in your hands as we pray. Holy Spirit, thank you so much. You have saved us. We didn't seek you, you came and saved us. And uh, Lord, now that we've encountered the living Christ, I pray like Paul, we would want to know nothing else but Jesus and him crucified among people. And Lord, we pray that we'll be so sold out, so Christ-centered, so gospel-centered, that we will throw everything in our lives behind it, including our finances. Because that's who we are, that's who you made us to be. And that's what we give God, because we want to see others come to know Jesus as we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why don't we stand as we worship God and song again as we give our hearts.
in our lives, in every step of our walk with you, God. This morning we just focus our eyes on you. Focus our attention on you, Lord. Let your way be done in our lives. Amen. Why don't you take a seat, church? Good morning. How are we all feeling? Oh, what, what's going on? It's a little lackluster. All right, well, uh, I'm very excited to be sharing this morning uh, with you all. I'm very excited because I think God wants to encourage us this morning. He wants to do something new in our church, in our lives. And so before we start, I just want to give a little disclaimer. Um, I'm a loud sharer, preacher. I don't stay quiet, but I need help. I'm used to preaching to youth. And if you have any youth in your house, put your hand up. If you've got a teenager in your life, wonderful. You know they're not quiet. You know they can be loud. You know they want you to buy the next greatest thing or do this for you or clean your clothes or not go to school. So I'm going to need some help. I'm going to need a little bit of holler back. Does anyone know what that means? I need a little bit of noise from you guys this morning. So we're going to give it a try. You guys, you're on the right side because you're on my right side. You guys, the left side, you're on my left side. All right, uh, up the back, we're going to split you right in the middle. Is that Charmaine? Charmaine, we're going to split you in half. <laughs> half of you can go for the other side. All right, so when I say right side, I want you guys to give me your loudest amen. Are we ready? Are you guys ready? All right, right side. Your greatest amen. Ready? Go. Okay. All right, left side. Let, let's get a little more oomph out of this side. All right, when, when I say left side, I want you to give me your best hallelujah. Are we ready? Go. Hallelujah! Yeah, that's how you do it. What, what's, come on, you. Well, church, I'm really excited because it is the first Sunday of 2018. What does that mean? That means a lot of things. The first thing is it is the first Sunday of a new year. And what comes along with New Year? I think that a New Year symbolizes a lot of things, but mostly a lot of excitement for what's going to come. We've had our time, we've looked back at 2017. It might have been a great year, it might have been a terrible year, but here we are on the cusp of the greatness of 2018, and we're looking forward, and there are so many good things happening. If you're a nerd like me, it is going to be an amazing year. Amen. There are so many crazy things that are happening this year in movies and in TV and in games and it's crazy. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I think and I believe that God is going to do something even better in the lives of our church, in our lives this year. And we've got to be ready. Yeah. We've got to be prepared for God to start something new in our lives. So that's what I want to share this morning. Are you ready to be encouraged, church? Yes. Awesome. Well, today I'm really excited, I'm really giddy, because it's a really exciting thing to share on new things. So that's my title for today's message, New Things. God wants to do something new in your life. So if you want to turn to me in Isaiah 43, 18, this is going to be our key verse for this morning. It reads, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Come on, church. This verse is amazing. This verse is awesome. Firstly, firstly, behold, I am doing a new thing. Stop. See. Wow. Behold, I am going to do a new thing. It's even greater because it goes on and says, now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness. The wilderness, a place we haven't been before. God is making a path through situations, through areas in our life that we've never traversed before. He's making a way and clearing it for us. And he's bringing reds and rivers in deserts, in barren parts of our lives. He's going to do something new. He's going to bring the rivers of living water through those areas of your life that you thought could never, ever have rivers. Is that not exciting, church? Yeah. This is so exciting. It is. <laughs> so today, I want to take a look at an example from Scripture, a really powerful one of someone whose life you would think was kind of all there, but God does something new in their life. But before we show that, who likes new things? Yeah? Put your hands up if you like new things. You like new clothes, you like new shoes. Women, handbags. Yeah. I hear that you can never have too many handbags. 
right? That's, that's the truth, right? That's in Scripture. I, I love new things. The world gets really consumed about new things, right? We hear all the time, the latest iPhone, the latest 10K TV that's going to make you blind. Well, I procured something new for myself recently, um, and I was really excited about it because I, I feel like that I've not just upgraded this object, but I've upgraded the lifestyle. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So I've gone